Hey everyone, welcome to the Stronger Women series with Livestrong.com. I'm Michelle Vartan and today we are here with pro surfer and social media personality Anastasia Ashley. Welcome Anastasia. Thank you for having me. So as part of our Stronger Women series, Anastasia is going to talk to us today about healthy competition and that's both in the water and also on social media. She's also going to talk to us about what it's like to be a leading woman in the male-dominated world of surfing. Yes, as you mentioned, very competitive surfing in the water and on the land. Absolutely. So let's let's go back to when you were when you started competing at six years old, um, and you became a pro at sixteen. What was competition like as a child? How did you process that? And also, what was it like competing with boys? Yeah. So when I started surfing at six, there was barely any women out in the water. I oftentimes was the only girl in lineup. I would see for months, even sometimes years at a time at certain breaks, and there wasn't enough competition. So I actually had to compete against the boys, and that made me have to get real tough because no boys wanted to get beat by a young girl at the time. So <laughs> it was right. definitely a bit of an ego bruise for a lot of my friends that I grew up competing with, like such pros as Jamie O'Brien or Fred Pataccia. I was in heats with these guys that later grew up to be legends in the sport. So it definitely made me really tough and taught me a lot of skills when I was competing against girls and when there was more events. Um, so it was a lot of fun and I, uh, you know, I, I just kind of had to be out there and show that not only was I good for a girl, I never wanted to just be good for a girl. I wanted just to be a good surfer. Be a good surfer. Did you feel like you ever had to overcompensate for being a woman? in the water at that age. Yeah, definitely. I felt growing up I had to, you know, get out there and and I really wanted to prove that I was not just good for a girl but a great surfer overall and um, you know, I I definitely put my heart and soul into it and I think having that pressure of, you know, having to prove myself even more um, really benefited me in the long run. When you were competing with boys at that young age, how did that set the tone for how you interact with men now? Well, I'm a competitive person, both in the water or on the land. So I think having that, you know, edginess of competing against boys when I was growing up has made me just, um, you know, tough and that I can hold my own, um, whether I'm in a lineup or in a board meeting or wherever I might be. So I definitely am a bit of a tomboy and that hasn't gone away. Awesome. That's, it toughened you up. So it's ended up serving you in the end. Yes. So as a surfer, you perform in really unexpected conditions, current, weather, the size of the wave. Uh, what are some mental tricks that you use when you're out on the water and you're in these unexpected ter conditions or territories? How do you handle that? Yeah, I mean, as you mentioned, surfing is crazy because it's the one sport that you're dealing with an unpredictable element, the ocean. So you never know. It could be big, small, windy, all over the place. And for me, it's always just been really important to keep calm and focused. And how I do that is just by, you know, sometimes slowing things down, taking a couple deep breaths and being really aware and present in my surroundings. And that's what's really helped me to focus. So for anyone who's having a stressful day or you're trying to focus on doing a sport or activity, I always just say just take a couple deep breaths and center yourself. I imagine there would be an element of trust as well, trusting that whatever happens, it's going to be OK. Like, however this wave ends, I'm going to be OK. I'm going to survive this. Yeah, I think that's about just having confidence in yourself and knowing that you know, you can do it and really believing in yourself because like any sport or any activity, it really comes down to having that self-confidence and knowing that you can do it. Yeah. You mentioned earlier about how when you were young, you just wanted to be a good surfer. And now you are, you know, sort of a social media sensation, if I can call you that. How do you um, make sure that you're being seen as a credible surfer, even though you are you know, a social media star. How do you balance that out? Yeah, for me, the social media just came naturally. I grew up always doing surf videos and photos. So for me, taking photos of myself on the beach with my board came really naturally. So I think there is a lot of um, noise on the internet in general. So for me, I just always say to keep true to myself and do what I enjoy doing, whether it's 
making a surf video or taking you know photos of myself in bikinis, having fun, whatever it might be. I just think for me, it's always about just staying true to yourself and and living a positive, healthy life. People are going to think whatever they're going to think, anyways. So yes. And in terms of taking photos of yourself, um, you recently shared some photos on social media where you were sort of showing your flaws as part of a, a body positive movement. Why is it important to do that? Yeah, I think for young women right now in this day and age of the internet and social media and this pressure to be perfect, I think it's really refreshing um, for people to share that, hey, you know, this is social media. This isn't always real and that, you know, you don't have to Photoshop your pictures and you don't have to look 100% perfect in every picture and it's still a great picture and I think having more people talk about that and mm. put themselves out there, you know, for me, I'm mostly on the beach with my hair in a knot yeah. and I think that is refreshing for a lot of people to see and I, it's something that I'm passionate about and want to share to, um, you know, whether it be young girls or anyone, just to have that self-confidence and positive yeah. feeling about yourself. Yeah, I think that's so important because people will agonize over their photos they're about to post. In fact, they'll take so many photos to get the right photo. And, and I could be one of them sometimes, yeah. you know. I think everyone is at oftentimes their worst critic, mm -hmm. but I always say, and i have a witness to this as well, what I find the most attractive is a smile and self-confidence. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, forget the rest. Just a smile and self-confidence. Yeah. It does wonder. A smile and some nice lighting helps, but yeah. a smile goes a long way. Awesome. So you were recently on Naked and Afraid. Um, you just filmed with that, or just finished filming that, is that yes, right? Yes, I just finished filming that. Okay. So I have to ask out the gates, are contestants actually fully naked, or is there some kind of coverage that, that and they make it look like they're naked? No. Like, you were totally in the buff. There is no, uh, no frills on Naked and Afraid. <laughs> you are not given robes. You are not given granola bars. You're not given anything. You're given your survival items, and you're given a little bag, uh -huh. a little satchel to put them in, and that's about and that's it. it. It's you're naked out in the woods or jungle or wherever they put you. I was in the jungle and you gotta fend for yourself. Yeah, okay, so you gotta tell us some stories about that. Um, what was the best and worst part of being on that show? The best part for me was able to have that social media and phone turn off. I didn't have, I had my phone oh, for yeah. only 30 minutes a day to take photos, but I was not connected you to any, connected. any service. Yeah. So that was really refreshing. The worst part was probably that too. <laughs> um, no, or the worst part was just, you know, sleeping on the dirt and yeah. with, you know, in the cold or in getting attacked by bugs. I mean, just being uncomfortable. Did you have survival training before or did I, you go in without knowing anything? I did one day of survival training with a great guy, Thomas Coyne, and he, you know, he took me out in Big Bear and we did some stuff, but, you know, it's a big difference when you're, you know, clothed and ready and you know you're eating and and you're not being filmed by a bunch of cameras so it definitely uh, was a bit of a shock when I got put in the actual jungle right and when you're out there can you interact with the film crew if you need help are you allowed to talk are you guys allowed to speak to each no, other no it's it's pretty much this invisible wall or they call it the fourth wall where it's like they're there and I you know for me I've made I would make references or I try to talk to them and they they don't even they don't they don't respond to you it's yeah. like it's like they're looking at a wall or something so <laughs> wow do you coming out of it do you feel even more tough than you were before yeah i definitely think after my experience on naked and afraid i feel like you know i knew i could push my limits and push myself and then after that i'm like there's pretty much nothing i can't handle yeah. after this i i had some pretty hard nights and yeah and days out there so i'm like you know that physically, I'm like, physically and mentally, I'm like, I feel pretty confident. I right. Tackle. I mean, you, you're putting yourself out there to essentially live people's worst nightmares, right? Being naked. Yeah. And then being stranded in the wilderness. Yes. At the same time. Yes. So. And also dealing with a stranger who you've right. never met before and, yeah. and having to manage that is interesting. So yeah. it's not just you. Okay. When this, do you know when your episode airs? Uh, August 29th. Okay, cool. We'll have to check it out. Yeah. Uh, so let's shift to you and your healthy habits. Yes. Um, what is, uh, what are like maybe a few things that you do every day that you think make the biggest impact on your health? It could be 
diet or exercise related or it, it could be you know meditation what is something that you think makes a big difference yeah for me health and fitness is such an important part of my lifestyle and I've you know being an athlete it's it's what I have to do and so for me some of the favorite things in my repertoire is like I love doing an exercise class like boot camp for me is what it's about you know and then when it comes to like after that like refueling I love aloe glow which keeps me <laughs> nice and hydrated and you know it just makes me feel good and because that's a, it's all about pushing yourself and then bringing it back to the center and then you know probably my everyday also in central is music Oh, okay. The music gets cool. me going. Yeah. It's me up in the morning. Mood booster. Mood bo booster. Yeah. And also it just keeps me motivated. So right. there's a lot of times I don't want to be in a gym or, you know, yeah. be getting up in the morning, it just helps. Yeah. So we got boot camp, hydration, and music. Yes. Those all sound great. Yes. And how often are you surfing? I'm surfing as much as I can every day. Um, you know, that is weather dependent, but for me, um, because so surfing you need waves yeah so oftentimes if I'm traveling if I'm doing a shoot somewhere or if I'm the waves are bad like I'm in a gym no matter what otherwise I'm surfing so no matter what every day I'm doing something active cool that sounds like a really nice life <laughs> this is a really hard question so you can take a second to think about it but if there's one message that you want to send to the world today what would that message be Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> I'm like, um, that is a great question. I would say that, you know, have fun, keep a positive attitude, and always try to live life with a smile. That's all you need. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining thank us today, you. Anastasia. And thank you. If you'd like to see this interview and more interviews like this, you can go to livestrong.com slash stronger women to check out our Stronger Women series. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, guys. See you soon.